if you're an individual, you should think about all your assets and divide them into three categories. What do I want to save forever, for 30 years? What do I want to invest in, in businesses that I believe in? And then what do I want to gamble or speculate with for fun? So some people like to gamble and speculate. And so they'll have a lot of their money in that. Some people are investors and they, and they kind of feel like they want to invest in some technology or something and they'll invest in that. But if you, would want to, if you just want to save while well, you're saving for a decade, then you just, uh, at whatever rate you feel comfortable, you start to acquire Bitcoin and hold it, right? So I, I think that Bitcoin will keep going up with volatility forever. So I will continue to buy Bitcoin. I bought it at 10,000. I bought it at 20,000. I bought it at 30,000. I bought it at 40,000. I bought it at 50,000. I'll buy it at 60,000. I'll buy it at 70,000. I'll buy it at 100, 150, 200. I would just gradually sweep my cash flows and convert my excess capital into Bitcoin as I come across it from time to time. But you take a long view, right? If you're and, and everybody just has to figure out what their time horizon is. Yeah, I say to people, if you wouldn't hold it for 10 years, you probably shouldn't hold it for 10 minutes. Wow. Right. So it's, if you're not, that's what you're doing if you're saving. If you bought something to give to your grandchildren or to your son or your daughter, right? You bought it for the long haul. And then, you know, other money that you need in the near term or that you want to gamble with or invest in, you use it for that. But, but obviously, if you're a long-term saver and you want to buy the apex property, Bitcoin is the apex property of the human race. If you're not sure about it, you should do more research. You go to hope.com, H-O-P-E. We've got lots of research on Bitcoin. It, there's a free course on Bitcoin at the sailor.org website. Otherwise, go on YouTube and Google and start doing your own research. Come to your own conclusions. Read the books. If you're not convinced, keep investing time until you are or until you decide not to do something. But you know, once you get uh, an understanding of what it is, generally people get more convicted as they know more and then they invest more. Most every other asset you can buy has a supply that varies with the demand and with the price. So if the price of gold goes up by a factor of 10, if gold was $20,000 an ounce, what do you think the gold miners would do? Produce more. Yeah. Uh, if, you could, uh, if, the, if you owned a company and the company's stock went up by a factor of 10, what do you think you'd do as a CEO? Well, probably sell some of my shares. Sell or stock. Issue more. <laughs> yeah. If you uh, had debt, if you issued debt, and uh, you had to pay 5% interest. And then uh, the, the, debt, the interest rate fell. And now I told you you could issue debt for 0% interest. What you, would you issue debt? Yeah, I mean. So if the price of bonds go up, people create more bonds. If the price of stock goes up, they issue more stock. If the price of gold goes up, they create more gold. If the price of houses go up, people create more houses. So every other asset is naturally inflationary, and the higher the price goes, the higher the supply gets, and that's, that's the society trying to bring the price down. Um, every company has executives, right? So employee salary go up. What would, if you had 10 employees in your company and your stock price went up by a factor of 20, you think they'd ask for a raise? Or equity. Yeah. They'd say, give me some stock options. Or, you know, or give me a raise because you're rich. And so if you have employees, if you have, if you have a executive team, your costs go up when the price goes up. And uh, that, that's the case with everything. Uh, what happens is all these other things you're investing in, they're not scarce. They're not a scarcity. They're a commodity. You know, what's, what's, you own land in New York City on Central Park. If, if somebody pays $80 million for an apartment on Central Park, what do all the developers do? They have a meeting and they decide to build a new building because they can sell every apartment for 80 million bucks. And now you don't have the only apartment on Central Park. They create more apartments on Central Park. So yeah, you ever go to uh, Dubai? 
You think land is scarce? They make land. They built land in the middle of the Red Sea. If the price goes up high enough, everything, all your costs will go up and the supply will go up. The price will come back down again because everything else is not scarce. Bitcoin's scarce. There's 21 million. There'll never be more than 21 million. You can expect the supply of currency to keep going up. The US dollar will keep inflating. It's inflating at 30% this year. There'll be 10% more year after year after year. Other currencies like the, the peso, the bolivar, the naira, the rubble, they will also inflate. Your assets denominated in those currencies will also go up in price. If you own stocks like the S&P index, they went up 30% over 12 months. But Bitcoin went up more than 300%. And gold didn't go up. So if you're an investor, you have to buy a, a market basket of scarce desirable assets that other people are going to want to buy from you in 10 years. So ask yourself the question, in 10 years, will someone else with money want to buy the thing that I own? Okay, if you buy some art, well, is it a Picasso? Will people want Picassos? If you buy a sports team, will somebody want to watch football? You know, if you buy a building, will someone want to live in the city or use the building I bought? It's all just a question of how much of that asset will exist in a decade and will people want it? And uh, I think Bitcoin is the most desirable asset because everybody on earth is going to want it. Cryptocurrency too, we've seen thousands of new cryptocurrencies created. Just and that's exactly recently. the point. They've all failed. You can create a million of them, but there's only one Bitcoin. So if you're stupid, then you will buy dog coin number 16. <laughs> if you're stupid. But if you had a million dollars and your choice was to buy Bitcoin or dog coin number 16, the problem with dog coin number 16 is the person that bought it is stupid. And they're stupid. They bought it because they didn't like dog coin 15 because that wasn't as good as Dogcoin 14. But someone that will buy Dogcoin 16 will buy Dogcoin 17 and Dogcoin 18. So you're getting yourself in a situation where you're buying something which is not scarce based on a fad and your doggy coin number 97 is gonna be defeated by Dogcoin 184. That's why you don't wanna own the Dogcoin. The person that buys Bitcoin wouldn't buy the dog coin, you see, because Bitcoin is a proof of work network secured by mining and real energy. Doggy coin 37 is an imaginary coin secured by imaginary energy and imaginary world for imaginary things. And you can imagine a million of them. Bitcoin is real money secured by real energy and real technology in the real world for real things. So, you know, will it be copied 10,000 times? Will they work? None of them, right? Bitcoin cash is less than 1% of Bitcoin right now. That's the closest like kind substitute. It's collapsing, right? So no, they're not going to work. They're not going to, they're not going to work because intelligent people want their money to last forever. It's kind of like, you know, you put your stuff on YouTube. You could create your own Yo-Yo Tube or MeTube or GrooveTube. Okay, why don't you do that? You could own it all because no one's going to watch it. Well, what happens if some people watch it? Well, the people that work for you will create Yo-Yo Tube 4 if it works, and they'll keep cutting the market in half. And, and the person that creates the one Yo-Yo coin will, you know, break off and create 172 more Yo-Yo coins. And they'll all lose their monetary premium and they'll lose their brand because, because people don't want to take the risk, right? They want the safe bet. And so Bitcoin is the safe bet, you know, not, not to mention the fact, as I pointed out before, the other problem with all the other networks is their securities, which makes them somewhere between illegal and unethical. So, so if you're not persuaded by the fact that they're, they're, they're risky, insecure, and a competitor will probably copy you, the real problem is they're not property. And if they're not property, 
that means you're not going to be able to trade them or promote them or hold them if you're an institutional grade custodian or a public figure. That's the problem. Bitcoin is property. 